it's still working. Everything's still working fine on it. And I'm running the vein. This is this is a 1.6 gigahertz single core. It's actually the lowest spec machine I've ever run my server on. I usually run it on a two to two and a, two two and a half gigahertz single core, but you know something like that. Well, that other laptop was a dual core, <clears throat> but. Uh, Anyway, laptops are not, I, you know, you might think they're great because they have a battery, but if your power goes out, you don't have internet anyway, so that doesn't matter. Um, uh, and, uh, and they're just not made to be running all the time. It's really hard on them. <clears throat> so uh, you can just see the battery degrading after a few months. You know, you can see they won't quite fully charge anymore. So this is second. this one is I think it'll do like 98 99 percent now and it used to do 100 percent always um, <clears throat> and the, the 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 original battery I watched it go down to the point where you couldn't use it anymore you know just over the years I've had it for probably 10 I don't know 10 years I bet it was given to me but uh, <clears throat> anyway I'm running the Bain 8 on it and this is for door 32. Now I'm tired of waiting. Uh, hit escape, hit control, alt, delete. I'm going to try the wireless keyboard just to see what would happen. It sees it. Turn it on. Okay, that made it work. Made it do something. I think maybe. It's, it's going to shut down, yeah. I noticed that it saw the Logitech before it saw the uh, HP, so I thought maybe HP is not actually working yet. It sees it, but that doesn't 100% mean that it's working. Yeah, it, it. Yeah, Logitech connected. When I turned it on, it connected. And then. Uh, that's pretty unusual. Uh, <clears throat> um, I mean, in the in the uh, boot screen. Well, of course, I really haven't tried that. And I, maybe I don't know if I ever have. But anyway, in the when something's hung up in the boot, it's usually you can't just turn on a wireless keyboard and have it work. You know, uh, it, it it's the newer Fedora. You know, the newer operating system that's doing that. Because this is a ten made in 2011 this machine it's not the machine so uh, shut down waiting for process oh okay waiting for process system the UDEV that's what's hanging it up but it looks like maybe it's beginning sending the kill okay it's this this signal kill UDEV. Now UDEV is what identifies all the hardware in the machine, which is what we're seeing. This is not, like I said, not a normal boot screen. It's everything, uh, the way it's listed, everything. It's, it's almost more like you're looking at a file, con config file or something, which could be possible. I, w I wish I would have thought and hit, you know, like tried to go up. Sometimes you can go back up to the top of the readout. Now, I don't think you can in the normal boot screen, but if it starts showing you other things, it, sometimes you can. But it's in the process of, uh, oh, it's still waiting for that process. So it wasn't able to kill it. It's PID 458 and 457 of UDEV that's given the trouble. So there's something going on with the hardware there. Huh. Well, that sucks. I haven't. Had, that's the first time I've had a bad, a bad uh, update. And like I said, well, sometimes something goes wonky in on an update, or just sometimes it used to happen out of the blue, you know, uh, <clears throat> once in a great while. And if you'd leave it alone for thirty minutes or so, it might go ahead and figure things out and go on but uh, but it's not 
it's not uh, you know like bad dad on the hard drive or anything like that because it doesn't say anything about anything like that I've seen that a few times no, enough times you know. oh let's see waiting for process and then it says uh, unmounting file systems then it remounted read only with option that was up here a few lines back. Ah, can't see it. <clears throat> well, anyway, a lot of it you don't doesn't mean much when you can't see it. Look like it says M U L N U L. No, yeah, it probably does say no. Detaching VM devices. Oh, it's still working on it. Yeah, now it says rebooting. It, okay, yeah, it was making sure it uh, shutting everything down properly. It says rebooting, so I think it's fixing to do it. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't have any clues as to what's really wrong because everything it shows is successful. There's no errors. Or no, you know, nothing that says anything's wrong. That's why I thought it was one of the reasons why I thought it was something I might want to document. You know, that, what the heck. Maybe I'll figure it out and be able to show it. <clears throat> Let's make sure my camera still looks like it's recording. Yep. This is going to end up being a couple, more than one video because it'll only do about 20 minutes without starting a new video. It does automatically, luckily. <clears throat> I th doing, it, let, doing it this way, I think, is better. You find out more, but also... Sometimes when you hard shut them down, you might do it at just the wrong time, and then you really break something, you know, like break the file system or something, and then you got to fix that. And that's no fun. Sometimes it's real easy, but sometimes it's not. <clears throat> I haven't had to do that in years, but that's some, that's one thing that would be no fun is try, having to re, you know, relearn everything. Luckily, I do have plenty of other machines I can get on to look things up and all that, but. Ah, searching file system and block devices. Okay, now that's the first mention of the file system I've seen. That's right before rebooting. And maybe, even though it doesn't say that, I could run, I'd have to go look it up, but I could run the uh, file system check. I, I don't even remember the commands and the name of the app. Um, FSCK, I think. Think. Yeah, FSCK, but you have to write, do the right switches and stuff, or else it won't it won't work. You, you want it to be automatic. You don't. You want to put the switch on there to tell it to fix. I think it's uh, FSCK forward slash F or something like something like that. But uh, there's a P. I don't know if you put a P in there. That'd be pause. I don't know. Uh, I don't want to interrupt it now, though, as much as I don't like waiting. <sighs> yeah, I had just got done with breakfast and was kind of just getting started with my day, and, which is pretty much normally on the computer. <laughs> and, uh, Then we got into this. So, yeah, my camera's not, uh, it, the one I'm using is one of those Chinese 4K cameras. It's the best, well, in some ways it's the best camera I've gotten. It's the highest resolution I've got, I'll say that. But uh, it's not actually really 4K. I, I'll have to, I guess I have to say it in every time I use it. It's 13 megapixel CMOS sensor. I knew that when I bought it, but um, you know it was $109, and it did everything I wanted. You can plug it into USB, and I can stream live from it and stuff. And it's all right, and I've kind of learning learned the settings. And well, I'll, no, I'll notice one day, but just by dumb luck, I was outside, and I uh, had it on set on 4K and everything. That does make the best picture overall. Anyway, I was outside and. Uh, the resulting and it's working on a coffee coffee maker and uh, 
Uh, and uh, that was the best looking. It was, you know, plenty of light, what I'm trying to get at. Plenty of light. And that was the best looking video I ever saw come out of that camera, this camera. <clears throat> but you can't, uh, it can't shoot the screens. I, that's one of the things I wanted it for. It can't shoot the screens, period, worth the crap. Uh, I, this time I brought the light as far down, as lo the, the exposure as far down as I could so that I could point it at the screen. Um, but I, we're sitting here looking at the, the black screen with a little white text. Uh, I could, I could uh, as long as this is taking, I may as well do something different than that. Uh, <clears throat> get tired of waiting on it again. <sighs> But, um, well, that's this is what I wanted, you know, the main thing I wanted to show. I think even, yeah, when it gets brighter, well, you can't go lower than that. So when it, when it comes back up, when I, when I do get it booted up, assuming I get it booted up sometime soon, um, <coughs> it's taking forever to reboot. I'm going to hit it on the regular keyboard and see if it does anything. Yeah, I'll give it lots of commands so that it has more to think about. I'll slow it down even more. That's the best thing to always do. Uh, it's not... Uh, I don't think it's reading this keyboard. It doesn't give back any feedback. Which, that can happen. Um, but one thing, it can happen when the... Uh, my KVM switch, I can switch between four different computers. It, uh, oh, it did USB, oh, disconnected. Yes, yeah, see, I, did, I moved it. Okay, now it's back on that machine. Oh, it's rebooting. I wonder why it decided to go ahead and reboot. Probably just coincidence. Unless that's what was hanging it up. See so the keyboard again, the HP keyboard. Okay, that's what it's giving a readout of. It's not going ahead and rebooting. I thought it was going ahead and rebooting. So switching my KVM switch made it give more readout. It, it's, it says, oh, USB device disconnected. Then it says it's reconnected. And now it's uh, HD generic, HP, no, HID, HID, input. It's talking about, yeah, there you go, HP Multimedia Keyboard Hub. It's got two USB 1.0 uh, connectors on it as well. I hardly ever used them the whole time I've had it because I got the KVM switch about the same time and I found out real quick. If you, plug, if you start using something, I always used to switch between machines. One machine was doing something. I'd sw I'd run two or two to four machines, not usually two to three, most of the time. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll get tired of waiting on one, and I'd admit, go to the other one, and whatever you know, have something going on in those different machines, whatever it was I was doing. This uh, this machine, I don't have a need for that. I can do pretty much everything on this. Two six core processors, <laughs> sixty four gig of RAM. And a gigabyte video card. <clears throat> uh, that's why I went in and got this HP. Well, number one, I guess the number one reason because it's the cheapest uh, server I could find. Three hundred, just under three hundred bucks, delivered. <clears throat> got it on Amazon, and uh, the Dells and the Lenovo's and uh, and the uh, IBM's. <clears throat> Which is be even older than the Lenovo because Lenovo bought IBM, uh, or just you know they jump up in price. <clears throat> Dell, some sometimes you see a Dell closer to that price, but of course I've already got what I want now. But it's definitely not rebooting uh, anytime soon here. I'm going to hit the Control Alt Delete and see if it sees it on this keyboard. And I've got the, uh, well, I've got the keyboard plugged. I've got a four-part USB, powered USB, which I found, uh, which I, uh, if, if you're going to have, see, I've got, got the server back over there, right? So I've got, um, well, I bought an extension cable, about a 
10 or 15 foot cable and it worked on the keyboard and mouse but it couldn't work on anything else it's not enough the voltage was too, and it is a, supposed to be bringing up the voltage too but it the voltage still dropped too much to do anything then i brought bought a hub and so the uh with power so i plug the i want to think how i did it i can see it's in here where does it go to oh yeah okay i think it goes down there yeah, I plugged it into the uh, long cable, and uh, see that's a, that's a it's not it, it doesn't have a the, the extension cable didn't have a power supply, so all it's doing is trying to bump up the voltage, you know, like with a buck converter. Um, but the, pa the the little hub I bought, which it also has two charging ports, uh, go it charge up to 12 volts. It's pretty cool. One. So uh, on one of the ports, and the other one's like just five volts. Uh, so anyway, then four regular ports, and they are, and it is USB three. So now I actually do have something with this. Well, of course it's bumped down to the USB two when it goes through that long cable. But anyway, <coughs> my key, uh, my the port on the KVM switch that goes to the HP keyboard and the Microsoft mouse is plugged into that hub, and then uh, on through that long cable. And so now I can plug more, you know, other devices. That's how I've got, and I've got the little wireless dongle plugged in there as well. But it's never caused any trouble. That's why I'm, you know, I'm not thinking I need to unplug. Well, of course, you'd always, sometimes you have to get down to the basics, you know, unplug everything you don't, you, you don't really need. Uh, and that might be, since it's hung in a hardware, I should go look at that. I have to stick my head in there. But... For all I know, something really crazy happened with that. Uh, but I, like I said, I don't see any errors. But um, let's go around here and look. It's not the ideal way to do this, is it? The uh, let's go around here and look. Where's the closet? Okay. Might need my magnifying glass with the. It's got a light on it. Sometimes I just use it as a flashlight. <clears throat> but Instead of holding it in till it quit, I think it took that signal, that shutdown signal, and I saw my boxes over right here. Where'd the other one go? There it is. I'm not going to pick them up right now. What's it doing? All it's doing is just telling me more hardware information. Oh, I forgot. Dang it. Oh, now I'm winding up my cable. With so much junk on here, you gotta... I know it's this tripod is not a fluid head, that's for sure. <clears throat> okay, um, make sure we look like we got sound. So, uh, Now, I thought it was going to go ahead and shut down. All I did was just do some more readout. So I'm going to leave the camera like it is and hit that power, hold that button until it shuts down. There's nothing wrong with any of the lights. They all look normal. No errors whatsoever. Huh. I 
I'm going to turn the power off to the server. I think. Yeah, there we go. Turn it back on. Well, I turned it, the yellow light's on, and I hit the button, but it didn't do anything this time. Might not have been ready yet. Okay, I'm just momentary pressing it. I'll hold it in. There, I had to hold it in longer. Once you do re, redo the power, I'm going to kind of watch by the door. Make sure nothing odd happens. <clears throat> Yeah, there could be, I mean, it work, that works with a regular computer when you have, it seems like, even though I see no errors, there could be one I'm not seeing and all that. Could be at the top of that screen that I keep forgetting to go look at. <clears throat> I mean, forgetting to try to get back to the top. Pick up these boxes while we're waiting here. Okay, now. Well, I don't see the hard drives lighting up, but it hasn't done anything yet. This time, to get over here and sit down, because what I want to do is catch, boot it up to an older kernel. Let's see, then maybe I can figure out what went wrong. Look in the boot logs and stuff like that. And, uh... <coughs> Now, now it's getting a little louder because because when I turn the power off, it makes everything kind of it re it has to re figure everything out. Okay, yeah, getting back to back to the boot screen. <clears throat> Starting to warm up here in my room. Let's see. Temperature is all still the same. 26C. This is in the server in the closet. It's cooler in the closet than it is in my room. And 78 Fahrenheit. Well, no, it's 78.4 in my room. So, And it's probably 65 to 70 outside. So I'm going to go crack the window. Well, not just yet. See what the... P410i controller does. We're all no resetting the whole thing, turning the power completely off to it. Could now it still says data backup previously failed. It's been saying that for months. Uh, I, I swear, when I very first started using it, it it said it worked. You know, there was something that made me think it was working. I thought it was working. I I remember that. It was in some of the videos I made. Uh, well, I guess I'll go ahead and let it try to boot. 511.7.10 FC32 X86.64. That's the kernel I'm booting to. Because since I did the hard, uh, powered it down, now it looks exactly the same. Okay, there's something broken in this kernel then. I don't know what it is. Generic. I wonder if I hit. You no, know, home and back. No, you can't go anywhere. Where was I? I mean, I don't know if that's right there. Since it's not to the bottom of the line, that may, that must be all that it's putting down. I just thought that. It just keeps showing the keyboards and their 